Day 665. Today there are a lot of updates from the Chasivyar direction. Since Russian forces launched their series of offensive operations, Chasivyar became one of their five main targets for the winter campaign. Chasivyar is a small town with a pre-war population of 12,000 people and it is located less than 5 kilometers away from Bakhmut. Over the last months, Ukrainians were trying to undercut Russian forces in Bakhmut from the south and put them into an operational encirclement. During the whole campaign, Ukrainians advanced by 7 to 10 kilometers, and once the fighting reached the railway embankment, the Ukrainian progress stalled. Ukrainian fighters from the 3rd Assault Brigade reported that the main reason was that Russians deployed several divisions worth of troops to prevent the front line from further collapse. So Russian waves of counterattacks were never-ending, making it very difficult to maintain the momentum, especially in the face of the additional barrier in the form of the railway embankment. In fact, an officer from the 26th Artillery Brigade reported that the number of Russian troops in the Bakhmut area recently reached 80,000 troops. For context, this is as many as during the peak heat of the battle for Bakhmut, and twice as many as Russians had allocated for the Avdiivka offensive that is happening right now. As the Russian offensive in Avdiivka is failing, Russian forces started increasing the number of attacks in this region instead. Moreover, a fighter from the 24th Assault Brigade reported that several days ago Russians deployed the best equipped motorized rifle detachments to Bakhmut, as those troops have the most modern tanks, armored fighting vehicles, radios and other equipment. Taking all of that into consideration, it becomes obvious that Russians would launch another offensive. Since Ukrainian forces were actively operating south of Bakhmut, Russians decided to launch their first attacks from the north. Geolocated footage shows how Russians were shelling this village extensively. Ukrainian fighters reported that some trenches were shelled so heavily that the soil was basically plowed and the positions completely destroyed. Nonetheless, Russian forces did not manage to get a foothold in the region. If you look at the topographic map, we can see that the village is located in the lowlands, right between two hills. Such a setting makes the defense of the village much easier as long as Ukrainians control the hills. That is why Russian forces increased the intensity of their attacks from Yahidne along this ridge. Russian sources released a video showing how they are using North Korean so-called golf cars to quickly deploy new assault units across the field. Russians also intensified their operations north of Bogdanivka, because without these positions, taking Bogdanivka is virtually impossible. So far, Russians managed to improve their tactical position south of Bogdanivka, while all Russian attacks north of Bogdanivka have been repelled. Soon, Russian forces also shifted their focus to the southern flank, because here Russians are lagging behind and have to retake all tactical heights that they lost during the Ukrainian counteroffensive. The main direction of their attack became the strong point north of Klishivka. In order to achieve it, the Russians are leveraging the forest that connects Klishivka and Bakhmut. This is a very smart move, because this way Russians avoid the need to attack across the rails and if successful can automatically recapture Klishivka. Geolocated footage shows extensive Russian artillery preparations on the main Ukrainian strong point on the hill. This is the place of the most intense clashes right now, as Russians took half of this strong point north of the road, while Ukrainians are holding the half that is south of the road. Simultaneously, intense clashes are happening in the so-called forest appendix. The freshest update suggests that Russians reduced the number of attacks here, meaning that Ukrainians stabilized the front line in this sector. Interestingly, Ukrainian fighters reported that after capturing some of the Russian fighters from the Storm V detachment, they discovered that these were Wagner forces. This should have been obvious, as Storm Z detachments, which are comprised of prisoners, have the letter Z in the name, which stands for Zek or prisoner in Russian, while Storm V detachments have the letter V because it stands for Wagner. So the integration of the Wagner group into the Russian military was completed, and they were obviously deployed to Bakhmut to leverage their experience and knowledge of the ground. Overall, the Bakhmut area may very soon become the place of the biggest battle once again, as Russians accumulated a significant number of troops, including motorized detachments with the best equipment and Wagner detachments with the best experience.
In the face of such a powerful force, the main objective of the Ukrainian forces right now is to leverage their tactical heights. And the good news is, Ukrainians control almost all heights in the region. Since Russians are committing a lot of forces to seize and keep the initiative throughout the winter, one of the main strategic goals of Ukrainian forces is to use defenses and weather conditions to bleed out Russian forces as much as possible, while minimizing their own losses to secure a chance of retaking the initiative once Russians exhaust themselves throughout their winter campaign. But more on that in a future video. If you are against the invasion of Ukraine and you want to support the work that I am doing, consider making a purchase in the online store UA Supporter. Right now you can enjoy substantial 20-30% discounts on our best-selling items. If you wanted to support my work but never got a chance, now is an ideal opportunity to make a purchase. Check out the link in the description to take advantage of this offer. Your support is greatly valued.